Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and we are here with another story time. This time we are featuring Just a Lucky So-and-So, the story of Louis Armstrong written by Lisa Klein Ransom and illustrated by James Ransom. And this is going to be for an upcoming exhibit we have called um, Everyday People, the Art of James E. Ransom, which was created by the National Center for Children's Illustrated Literature and sponsored by CFP Foundation. So. This will be a book featured in the exhibit and some of the artwork, and we'll have a lot of other artwork featured by James Ransom. So when we open up, it'd be really cool if you guys can come by and see it. So without talking too much more, let's get started on this story. Just a Lucky So-and-So, the story of Louis Armstrong. Awesome little trumpet there. And a riverboat too. In New Orleans, Louisiana, in a part of town outside of Storyville, tucked in a corner called Bacco Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, little Louis Armstrong was born, black and poor and lucky. My whole life has been happiness. On the corner of Perdido and Liberty, little Louis lived in one room with no lights and no running water. But it was home to him and his sister, Mama Lucy, and his mama, May Ann. The grandson of slaves, little Louis toted, a lo toted laundry, hauled coal, sold newspapers, and scavenged through garbage to earn money for his family. On the streets, little Louis sometimes made his own trouble. But it was nothing his mama's sharp tongue and a switch from the chinaberry tree and Grandma Josephine's yard couldn't fix. I say never worry what the other fella has, as long as you're having fun in your own way. Every day, outside his window, little Louis listened up and down the streets to the music of brass bands, funeral marches, honky-tonks on Saturday nights, church services on Sunday mornings. School learning at the Fisk School for Boys began for Little Louie at age seven. Before school and after, on the Karnofsky's wagon, next to Morris, Little Louie tooted a tin horn. Penny for your rags? And bleated, nickel for your scraps? Through the window of a pawn shop, a cornet caught Louie's eye. A five dollar loan from Morris bought the cornet for Louie. Some brass polish and oil brought the horn to life. Although I could not play a good tune, Morris applauded me just the same. Down Rampart Street, four boys harmonized My Brazilian Beauty. Little Mac on drums, Big Nose Sydney on bass, Redhead Happy Bolton as baritone, and the gravelly tenor of Little Louie, the boy with a smile so wide open kids called him Satchel Mouth. New Year's Eve in New Orleans was all music, fireworks, and midnight shots fired in celebration. Little Louie joined in with his stepfather's gun. All his scrapes with the law added up, and at 11 years old, Little Louie was sent away. I thought the world was coming to an end. At the Colored Waifs home for boys, Little Louie could barely eat. He missed his mama his sister, and his cornet. Through his open windows drifted the call of the bugle. A bugle to rise, a bugle for chores, a bugle for bed. The band leader, Mr. Davis, told Louis that boys from the battlefield don't belong in a band. Little Louis sang solos for everyone to hear. Mr. Davis listened and started Louis with the tambourine. Then he played the drums. Mr. Davis made him the bugler. Then he put him on cornet. Mr. Davis made him the band leader. Me and my music got married at the home. The band traveled to play in every corner of New Orleans, uptown and downtown, West End, Spanish Fort, and front of town. But for little Louie, there was nothing like walking through his old neighborhood at the head of the band blowing home sweet home. Lining the streets was everyone he knew, and right up front was his mama, May Ann. Could not think of anything but my good luck.
At 14, little Louis returned to Perdido Street, not so little. By then, he could make any song swing. Louis needed to hear a song just once, and it was his. He worked all day hauling coal and all night playing in honky-tonks around town. Louis met Joe as Joe paraded through town with the Onward Brass Band and followed him everywhere. Louis ran Joe's errands, carried his horn. But in the in-between times, Joe taught Louis note by note. In Joe's home, Louis filled up on rice and beans and music lessons. Louis traded in his first pawn shop cornet for Joe's used one. I prized that horn and guarded it with my life. Louis listened to Joe's horn crow like a rooster, growl like a lion, cry like a newborn baby. Two horns, side by side, so close. Louis called him Papa Joe. Aboard the SS Sydney, he blew swing, waltzes, and dance tunes all up and down the banks of the Mississippi River. On land, Louis blew with the Tuxedo Brass Band, and then Kid Ory's hottest jazz band in town, featuring Baby Dodds, Pops Foster, and his Papa Joe Oliver. When I picked up that horn, that's all. The world behind me, and I don't concentrate on nothing but it. I love them notes. After a time, New Orleans honky-tonks were too small for the king. Joe hopped the train and blew goodbye to New Orleans. Chicago was waiting. Louis stepped in where Joe stepped out. His horn had folks talking about the little boy from the battlefield. Night after night, Louis filled up the halls, filled up the streets, filled up his pockets with the music from his cornet. Four years later, Joe sent a telegram. Louis was ready to leave. He sent for me. And whatever he's doing, I want to do it with him. All aboard! Louis stood on the train platform, fish sandwich in one hand, cornet in the other. Worried he'd catch a cold in the Windy City, his mama made him wear long johns in the August heat. Joe Oliver in Chicago were waiting. I'd never seen a city that big. On the south side of Chicago, at the corner of 31st and Cottage Grove, Louis peeked into Lincoln Gardens Dance Hall. A globe glittered from the ceiling. The balcony looked out over the dance floor. Joe and King Oliver's Creole jazz band warmed up. Opening night always makes you feel as though little butterflies were running around in your stomach. Louis' tuxedo was pressed and patched and small. He walked to the bandstand where Baby and Johnny Dodds, Lil Hardin, Honor Dutry, and Bill Johnson waited. From the very first note, they knew. He played quietly behind Joe, softly in the back of Joe, echoing after Joe. Someone yelled, let that youngster blow. And Louis stepped forward and stood in front of Joe and blew. My boyhood dream had come true at last. Louis stood in front of bands in Chicago, New York, California, and Europe, on records, in Hollywood, on Broadway, and on the radio. A little boy from New Orleans, Louisiana, from a part of town outside Storyville, in a corner called Back of Town, in a section nicknamed the Battlefield, was just a lucky so-and-so. I was so happy and did not know what to do. I had hit the big time. The end. So, once again, this was called Just a Lucky So-and-So, the story of Louis Armstrong, and it features artwork by James Ransom. You guys should definitely come and check it out where you can see this book and a lot of others and a lot of great colorful artwork. So come and see Everyday People, The Art of James E. Ransom, sponsored by the CFP Foundation once we open back up. Uh, my name is Kevin and this has been a story time with the Children's Museum of Houston.